Um, that's a great question. So at the start of every project on Horizon, um, one of the big questions we have to answer is where are we going to go? Like, what's the what's the new setting for the game? Um, and every time we draw up a, a really long list and then we draw up a really short list uh, and then we lock on our location. The thing we most want to give to our players this time uh, is diversity, right? We wanted the world to be as diverse as it possibly could so that you were always exploring and discovering new types of terrain, new types of environment. Uh, and Australia gives us that. Australia is an incredibly diverse uh, country. You know, it has the outback, obviously everyone knows the outback but there's gorges and canyons, there's the wine country of the Yarra Valley, um, there's rainforest, lots of rainforest that you can drive through. Um, we have the city of Surfers Paradise, which actually you know, has a great motorsport connection. Uh, and then we have the beautiful Gold Coast. Um, and all of this combines to make the most diverse open world we've ever created. It's actually a bit of a fact for you. It's twice as diverse as the world of Forza Horizon 2. You know, there's twice as many ecotypes for you to discover. And that's the thing that we love about Australia. Um, so I will tell you that the shortlist ended up being three, uh, three locations. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the other two were uh, for reasons that you can probably work out uh, on your own. But yeah, Australia was the, the eventual winner. Um, so there are no new tuning options. Um, but one of the things that I think we're most excited about talking about in Horizon 3 um, is the new customization options. So visual customization is something which um, we've heard from the community that is something that they want to see improve, they want more options. We have given them more options in Forza Horizon 3. It's probably the biggest overhaul of the visual customization uh, aspect of Forza in many, many years. And what that means for our players is um, there are a wealth of new visual customization options across a really, really large number of the cars in the game. So that's new rally parts, that's new off-road parts, um, new wheels. Let me tell you about the new wheels. We have more than 30 new wheels. Um, we've refreshed that list. Um, and we have amazing new wheels from Rotiform, 1552, ADV1. ADV1 were actually so excited to come into Forza that they offered to design a unique Forza uh, rim for the game and that's actually in the game now and you can see it uh, you can actually see it in our, our behind closed doors demos uh, a bit later on if you if you attend um, so that's wheels the big news though and you maybe saw it in the trailer you maybe saw it in the briefing uh, stage demo that we did is the arrival of wide body kits in Forza so we've got wide body kits from Rocket Bunny and from Liberty Walk um, and they are, they are an awesome customization option. So that's actually where we spent a great deal of time on Forza Horizon 3, making sure that there are more ways for you to express yourself through the way you customize your car than ever before. Uh, there is one I'm going to talk to you about, and I haven't actually told anyone, anyone this week about it. Um, it's kind of related to photo mode, and it's what we call drone mode. Um, so at any point during gameplay, and this is both in solo and also in multiplayer, you can activate drone mode uh, and actually leave your car. And you can c basically control a drone as it flies around and films you know, whatever's happening, right? So you can imagine immediately the possibilities. I'm thinking of the guys who make videos, but it's also going to be great for photographers as well, and it's going to work you know, across modes. Um, you can get out of the car, you can fly around, you can actually move at real speed with this thing so you can keep up with, uh, with cars in multiplayer. And I think we're gonna see some great videos um, hitting, the, you know, hitting online and being shared around uh, using this new drone mode. So I know Mantio Max from the forums, obviously, yeah. So, um, hi. Uh, <laughs> um, so to answer some of those questions, um, clubs are back, thousand player limits, um, the same kind of club ladders and intra-club and extra-club competition that we had last time. Um, no, no car sharing amongst clubs. Here's where we're gonna do car sharing and it's in the four player campaign co-op mode. So big feature that we're talking about, we demonstrated it on the, on the briefing stage yesterday. Um, it's something that we've always wanted to do in Horizon. Like it seems like Horizon's the perfect game for four player campaign co-op. We've never felt able to do it right just yet. We do this time, we've done it right. Which means everything in the solo game, you can play in campaign co-op. You can play with up to four players. And when you're playing four player campaign co-op, um, you're, you're in a team. So you, those four guys or girls are in a team 
um, and during that you can share cars amongst the players who are playing, right? So you're playing around, you've got a car that uh, you're entering an event that one of the players doesn't have a car for, you can share cars in that experience so everyone can go together and play through the game together. So I don't think there's anything to tell them at this point on that question, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's a cool idea. We've actually talked about that a number of times in the past uh, on Horizon. It's not a direction we're going to go in with speed traps and speed, uh, speed zones, um, because we like to make sure that um, there's, there's kind of competition across the game and across players. Here's what we have done with all of those ambient challenges, which we've implemented a star system this time. Um, so you can get one star, two stars or three stars on every speed trap and speed zone. We've got a couple of other new ambient gameplay types as well. This time we have danger sign jumps and we have drift zones as well. And you can get up to three stars on each individual instance of those challenges. And what that means is for each star you earn new fans, which will you know, contribute towards the progression of your festival, um, up to three stars and beyond three stars um, you know, for everything that you do beyond that specific threshold, um, you're actually going to start earning open world points, you know, which contributes to basically how good of an open world player you are. You know, so if you can do 200 miles through a speed trap, which gets you three stars, for every mile or, or, or kilometer that you do ahead of that, you're going to start earning points, and that's a stat that we're going to surface, and it shows how good you are in the open world. So that's a, that's a really good, great question. Um, people have asked that a lot of our previous games and we didn't have a great answer for them, if I'm honest. I think we do now. Um, this time you can choose your driver character um, from, I think it's 14 different uh, character types who are really diverse in terms of ethnicity and in terms of gender. Uh, and it's up to you to pick which one of them best reflects you and you get to choose them. So there's no customization uh, per se that you're not going to be able to choose hats and moustaches, but you are going to be able to choose a driver that represents you much better than we ever have done before. I'm still kind of amazed and shocked at how far Forza has come over the last 10 years in particular. It's uh, since the launch of the original Forza on the original Xbox, we were scrappy, we were young, we had a vision, we wanted to do a lot of things, and since then, we've learned a lot, and more than anything, we've grown this huge community. And the community is really what this game is all about at this point. It's about building a larger automotive community. So what I'm excited about with the future in particular is looking at the Xbox family of devices, the possibilities of what forts can do as that whole world moves, well, to coin a phrase, beyond boundaries. So the hardware disappears, and it's just you and your games in the community. Now there's a lot of trends right now, and I think that Forza has really been on trend many times. Be it with UGC or uh, Web 2.0 was which what we called it back then, and now looking at things like esports and the announcement of Forza Racing Championship. When you look at a lot of the features that are going on with the community in Horizon 3, that's very much on trend as well. So it's responsive to the community. I would also say there's another angle. Right now we have two expressions of car passion, right? We've got really, really hardcore simulation. It's about speed, it's about determination. And we have Horizon, expansive. It's about freedom, it's about music, and it's fun. It's always fun. But there's so much more to car culture, and there's so much more to this world than console games. So I'm excited about the Xbox family of devices, but I'm also excited about new ways to explore culture, car culture, new experiences, new expressions. So I can't announce anything of what that is, but I think that the world is still turning quite a bit, and Forza is going to be uh, getting bigger and bigger. I have literally nothing to add to that. Like, what, what am I going to say after that? Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cars are good. <laughs> You've had a long day, my friend. <laughs> right. If you just crop me out of that shot, right, and, and get his thing, 